the environmental is kind is kind of being destroyed and I, I don't know if we could live here very much longer maybe there's some way that somebody can if we we scream loud enough and be exposed more about how we live here in this community then maybe maybe people will listen what i love most about this place is the people I loved the river, but it's slowly being depleted. And I loved the environment because it was so green at one time and beautiful, but it's not as great as it used to be. I loved the hunting and trapping that I did before it all went away. It was so amazing at one point when my dad was here he was the chief here we used to go hunting and trapping with my dad me and my brother and my mom and because my sisters were all gone away to residential schools those were the days that we all got along in this community and we all helped each other we hunted and we we shared we made stuff for each other my mom made moccasins and clothes from animals that we caught. We only took from the earth was necessary, was never over indulging, you know. Especially my dad was the wisest. He was uh, a good provider. And those days that's what made you chief, was a, a provider for your family and shared everything. Living, living today is um, a struggle right now, here in this community. Why, why is it a struggle for your community? Everybody here has health issues. We're not as happy as we used to be before industry came here. There's good and bad that comes with industry. Money, I guess, is the only thing that really is a the good thing that comes with industry. I don't think uh, the environment and the way we live, it's a struggle. I hope young people realize that it's time for them to stand up and scream and say, we want this world to keep going. We don't want to destroy it. Say, you know what? I want to raise my kids in this world. But we always, they, they always tell us that Native people are the, the keepers of the earth and that we are the ones that are supposed to be the knowledgeable ones that makes a difference to how we live on this earth. We should be teaching our people how to live. But we're, most times we're suppressed here. <laughs> and so now it's 2015 and we have young people coming. But there's few and far between though. We need all the young people to start realizing that how we live on this earth is very important. How do they not know what's going on? Everything here is so bleak. <laughs> and that's the sad part. Our river is being destroyed and, it, and that's so heartbreaking. And sometimes that's why we don't even want to, you know, we kind of like just put it in the back of our heads and we don't, we don't even want to deal with it because sometimes we don't, who's going to help us, right? When you look back, what were one of the moments where you started to realize that there were people encroaching on your land and that it was going to be very difficult to remove them? <laughs> My dad told us that. It was long ago when I was just a young girl. We just thought it's going to be like Suncor and Syncrude. How did we know it's going to be like 25 or 30 or how many ever there is here right now? Do you feel like your community has been consulted? It's only certain people really get consulted. They always try to get the elderly people involved. And really, I think they should start at school. We have a school here that goes from uh, kindergarten to grade eight. And most of the time, our kids go to school in Fort McMurray. 
they get so used to seeing it, it's just like second nature, I guess. You know, for to see all the tailings, sand that's blowing, the industry, the big stacks, and they're just so used to it now, it's not even really an issue anymore. We don't even do anything to educate our kids, and we should start right from the time that they're going starting school. I think about all the, the water depletion all over the world, and, I, and, it, and it's a scary thing. But for us here, we're told not to drink our water uh, from our tap. We always have water delivered to us every week, once a week. People don't even realize that. Why do you think stories like this aren't being brought to people who might be able to make decisions to help fix this? I am sure that the government is aware of it. What are they going to do for us? Move us? Maybe that would be the next thing they're going to have to do, is to move us from here. My sister will never leave, leave here. She'll, she'll die here. <laughs> like, this is our home. What were some of the lessons that you learned from your father that you think need to be continued on for generations? Why do we always have to be digging and destroying our earth? That was one of the things my dad would say. We could live a simple life. We don't need to be rich. We don't need to be. We just need to live have a future and and only take from the earth what you need. Give something back. Have there been many people from outside communities come and, and try to help and try to make a positive contribution? Um, there is a few, like not very many, but I get frustrated sometimes when we get bombarded by uh, people and then it's not really being told to people outside in the world. Like that, and that's sometimes that's, that's a bit of a struggle to educate people outside and tell them, you know, this is, hello, this is us here over here. <laughs> There's people that come in and out of here doing stories, and, but we don't hear a lot of it. The feedback itself is not as, as plentiful as we, we want it to be. And that's why the frustration comes in. So when you come here and, and you see us and you, 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 what made you come here? What made you come here and ask me all this stuff? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> I came here because I knew this place was one of the worst environmental catastrophes in our country and I hadn't heard of anyone actually living so close and <laughs> when Molina from the Lupacon First Nations told me that there were not one but two communities within what five minute drive ten minute drive mm -hmm. I I knew that this had to be a part of the story because if I hadn't heard of it, then who there must be yeah. a lot more people lot who haven't. So, the, and that's the thing, right? So that's why when I say I try to write letters and try to make people people aware, I said, just come visit us. I always say that in my letters. Just come visit us and tell and and see how we live. We can't sleep with our windows open at night because we get so, it's so stinky sometimes. It's overwhelming and we get letters, oh, there's going to be a blast uh, and, and next thing you know, your house is shook. They, we just got a letter from one of the oil companies that they're, they're going to be having a shutdown and they said there's going to be really bad air quality for seven to eight weeks. You know, no, like that's a long time. I don't think you can hold your breath that long. Yeah. So it's, it's constant, constant struggle. That's why I say, okay, come here, tell us, help us. 
How, how could someone make a difference? I've been thinking about that for for a while now and I and I just think how could you help us now look at how far this community has come and to the point of we have to get bottled water or health issues are so rampant maybe helping us with our water like our doing something better to help us maintain a bit quality of life that is up to par did your community ever really have the opportunity to say yes or no to this? Well, they are all on Crown land. So the government gives them the go ahead. Most of the times we don't have a say. But I know that they consult with the chief and council. And that's how the sustainability department came into play. So they help us build a daycare or, or elder center. Or wellness, give money to the wellness center so they can help our kids uh, go to field trips and stuff like that. And that's uh, the extent of it. Uh, the, the food bank from Fort McMurray comes in here uh, once a month and brings us food. Sometimes I wonder why, why we still struggle. But yet we're here in this community, we're always struggling and, and trying to educate our kids, um, feed our kids keep our kids healthy. You know the amount of money and the billions and billions of dollars that come out of this region and yet here we are, we're still, we're still struggling and trying to help making people aware that we are here and we, you know, we need help. Well, I promise you that I will spread this story and this conversation that we've had as far as I can. And I really hope that the policymakers and the people at the United Nations can really hear what you have to say and think about it outside of any kind of political lens, because this is something that is a human story all across the world. Yeah. And it's about time we stop thinking about dollars and cents as <laughs> the main decision points, right? Yeah. Yes. It's, you know, like, we all struggle to to find a career and get educated or see what what kind of path we're supposed to take to make this make your life better it has never been easy as growing up and trying to be assimilated into white society right a lot of us we come back home to our reservations and we try our best to make a living and to take pride in what does it take? <laughs> What's it going to take to finally realize, you know, this, this is very important. You know, may, I'm, I'm happy you're here because maybe somebody's going to finally wake up and open their eyes and realize this is, you know, we need to do something. Well, we're going to do our best. <laughs> and thank you so much for this conversation. It's, uh, you're very welcome. Mm -hmm.